three LED lamps from One Below, which used to be Pound World until they went bust and then they reopened as One Below. And this is part of their current stock of LED lamps. And I thought it'd be interesting to compare the 6 watt, 10 watt and 13 watt against each other with internal circuitry by popping them open and uh, doing some tests as well. So the first thing I did was I tested them electrically. The 6 watt came on by on 6 watts, 46 milliamps, and a power factor of 0.61. That's the relationship between voltage and current. It's never perfect for electronic loads. The 10 watt also came in spot on 10 watts, 73 milliamps, a power factor of 0.56. Uh, pending the accuracy of the little uh, power tester I've been using recently because it's not my normal one. And the 30 watt came in very close at 12.8 watts, 87 milliamps and 0.6 power factor. So let's start by seeing how easy these are going to open. If they take too long to open, I shall pause momentarily to spare you the torture of me slitting lamps open. But typically speaking, I'll get my spudger, slide it down the side of them and then work it round the sides to break the silicone seal. Oh, there's a, there's a big chunk of silicone there. Uh, and hopefully that will liberate the cap. This may not work. When doing this, make sure that the lamps aren't glass. It opens fairly easily. There's silicone all over the LEDs. Take a look at this. That is disastrous. That is so bad. That is appalling. Uh, there's silicon just encroaching on this LED, which can be picked off, and those two have had their output pretty, and this one is a, a bit blocked by uh, silicon. That's pretty shit. They've really been a bit over generous in putting that in. What do we see inside? We see possibly the, well, I don't know what's under there, because that is covered in schmoo red right, tell you what i shall come back to this let's uh, let's open the next one so i'm going to zoom back out again if you don't want to see them being opened or you like don't want to see me slip and cut myself horribly which is the next thing i was going to say uh, if you do this after making sure that these are plastic and not glass don't use anything sharp because when you're cutting curved surfaces, it's very easy for sharp knives to slip. So I would recommend something like a blunt butter type knife for doing something like this. Or, as I'm using right here, a spudger. Righty ho. Is this going to come out? It has. It's better. Okay, and then finally, the 13 watt one. which has a much bigger body. The other bodies are all appropriately sized. I guess ultimately this has been used as a sort of heat sinking element as well. So in goes the spudger and I work it round. This is an Isisamo spudger. By far the best spudger I've ever used. I have tried cheap copies of the Isisamo and they were rubbish. They Actually, the metal split or kinked and in some instances it did so in a dangerous manner that resulted in close scrapes, lots of LEDs, and a bit of extra circuitry in here. Oh, that's interesting. Radio. Now it's time for me to reverse engineer these. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore the circuitry. There were some common factors to them all. The incoming supply had a 10 ohm fusible resistor on them all, going to the bridge rectifier, then a smoothing capacitor, and then the slight load capacitor, the resistor, should I say. The slight load resistor all had the same value, 510k. And their purpose is to make sure that when you turn the light off, the lamp goes out decisively. It doesn't just fade away. But it also puts a slight load on to allow for slight capacitive coupling in the switch wiring, which can make some LED lamps glow, particularly this type because they are super sensitive. The capacitor varied between the lights. The 6-watt one had a 4.7 microfarad capacitor. The 10-watt one had a 5.6 microfarad capacitor. And the 13-watt one had a 10 microfarad capacitor. One moment, please. And continuing on, that was a delivery of electronic components, including a couple of large 40-pin microcontrollers. Intriguing. 
So the capacitors are different between them all depending on the sort of power rating going from the 4.7 up to the 10 megafarad at the 400 volts, which is a fairly standard value of these death beam capacitors. The LEDs are different for each lamp. In the case of the lowest power on the 6 watt one, it has six, um, should I say the 6 watt one has seven chips, which I've now uncovered. The silicon was over them. That was very messy. And I reckon that each one will have 12 chips in it because they usually add up to near the sort of peak mains voltage so that they drop as little as possible over the linear regulator. The 10 watt one, I believe it has 12 nine chip LEDs and the 13 watt one, I believe it has 18 six chip LEDs. This is just based on roughly dividing by about the 300 volts and then the three volts roughly per LED gives a rough value of that and that does fit in with the way they tend to configure these chips because say for instance in the case of the uh, the six uh, way chip you'll often have a little matrix of chips more or less on the same die that uh, it, the, there's a bond on there and then it sort of zigzags across and then there's a bond there and it just means they can put a lot of chips and get a higher voltage on a single led and it makes the design of the circuitry simpler then it's interesting because it comes down to the current regulator chip. This is a linear current regulator, which means it just effectively changes its resistance to match the sensed current flowing through it. And you set the current by an external resistor. In the case of the 6 watt one, it's a 33 ohm resistor. The 10 watt one has a 20 ohm resistor. And the 13 watt one actually has two of these chips in parallel with matching resistors to 33 ohm resistors. So it's effectively the circuitry of the 6 watt one times two to spread the dissipation across these little chips. In the 6 watt one, the chip was a PM2011F or an HOBO3A, which was the two numbers on it. I think PM2011F sounds about right. The 10 watt one had a different chip, EG1000E, and the 13 watt one had two ICL1103 chips. I wonder why they choose those. I wonder if maybe this is a cheaper chip, but not suited to higher temperatures. And this, the ICL one is just a better quality chip that's better suited to the higher temperatures of the higher power lamp. Unfortunately, they've not done that thing that you have two resistors in parallel and you can often, to fine tune the value, and you can often just cut one out. It means that if you want to hack these lamps, in the case of this one, I suppose you could actually just disable one of the chips by uh, breaking one of these resistors off and that would just mean that only one chip would be passing the sort of main current. The other one would be permanently in a sort of limiting mode. Uh, the other option is to, in the case of these two, that just have the single sense resistor, uh, is to desolder it and then try and tack another resistor on there with a higher value, because the higher the value goes, the lower the current goes, and doubling the value will half the power of the lamp roughly. Um, so in the case of the 60, the 6 watt one, the, you'd replace the 33 ohm resistor with the closest to 66. I think that'd be a 67. No, that'd be 68. And that would pretty much half the value. In the case of the 10 watt one, the 20 ohm resistor would be replaced by something close to, I'm just looking at my resistors here, 40 ohms. Oh, 3K, uh, sorry, replace it with 39 ohms would add roughly half that. But it's interesting. I mean, it's very uniform circuitry right up to it gets here and then they've used different chips in every single one and they've just uh they've matched the leds if you look at the circuit boards of the smaller ones actually you know what they do have the option for sticking extra leds in here they've got options for fine tuning the total number of leds in series if for instance in this case if they put one here it'll actually well let me show you on this if they put one here it would effectively bypass those two LEDs so they can fine tune. They can leave those unpopulated and they can basically make it a lower number of LEDs just to fine tune the uh, voltage drop across them. In the case of these ones, they have multiple options, presumably for different countries with different voltages. Uh, by populating the LEDs onto different pads on these, it can be a smaller number of LEDs for that lower voltage or a higher number of LEDs to suit the appropriate country's voltage. But that's it. That is those three LED lamps dissected, and they're fairly typical. Bit disappointed at the schmoo all over the LEDs in this one. That was a bit naughty, but, well, people like us can 
can modify these. We can take the covers off and we can fine tune them to our requirements or clean up things like that. But that is it. Um, the only really significantly odd thing about that was the fact that the chips are all different versions, but basically doing the same thing. But there we go, the three LED lamps, analysed from one below.